Hi, this is Ellen Williams disposition video for SPD 501. The first question is, what is the special education teacher's role in supporting learning, improving planning and practice, upholding professional expectations and ethics, and collaboratively advancing the profession? As a special education teacher, my job is to provide instruction and support working hand in hand with the general education teacher to facilitate better learning within the general ed classroom for our students who are on an IEP. That involves working to differentiate the work that the students are learning in class and to use supplemental materials in my classroom to help better support those students to learn those goals um, based upon what they need in their IEP. Some of the things that a special education teacher needs that I've found by reading through the dispositions are fairness, which is building positive relationships, and also assessing students by progress monitoring to ensure that they are working hard towards their goals and that if for some reason something is not happening, is not working correctly, we can go in and change that. <clears throat> also working collaboratively with my professionals. <clears throat> they are the backbone of my department. They are the ones who are out there in the field helping those students in the gen education setting and making sure that those kids are getting everything that they need so that their education is at the same level as those of the gen ed students. I also need to have professional conduct by communicating effectively with all of those who work in this, with the student. That starts with the gen ed teacher and the paraprofessionals, as well as the janitors, the principals, the secretaries, also any related providers in terms of occupational therapy, physical therapy, or speech and language therapy. Honesty. Honesty is a huge one. We have to have the student be our center. They are the ones that we are looking at when we make an IEP that's based around them and all of the decisions that are made have to be student centered. What's best for them? Being honest about that and communicate properly with the parents, I believe is a good way to have a build a nice foundation and a proper IEP. Advocate. This is something that I feel I, I possess. I have learned in the last three years, this is my fourth year teaching as a special education student, that I am the best advocator of my students. My students need to have everything in their disposal to be able to level the playing field so that they can learn the same amount of goals and all of the skills that they need just as they would, would in a regular gener general education class. Um, I need to be compassionate, keeping my students um, Knowing who they are and what they do in the classroom is one thing, but also outside of the classroom. What's going on in the hallways? What's going on in the classrooms? What's going on at home? I may not know all of that. One of the things about working in the community that I do is that we are a small community. And so the kids that I work with are involved in a lot of things. I have children who are involved in a lot of things. I have a, a daughter. And so you get to know these students outside of school. And so using that information that I know helps me to better um, build relationships with them because we do things after school. I'm very involved in an after school program. So that's something. But that's how I build relationships with my kids. Um, another disposition that I feel is extremely important and that I also possess is having high expectations. I have said in many IEP meetings to parents that I feel that students on case on my caseload have just as much right to learn and just as much ability to learn as any other kid in that school. We just need to create a plan, uh, their IEP, that will help them achieve those goals in, in a different manner. Um, with accommodations and help and services so that they can be successful. Um, sometimes I will actually say to a parent that sometimes the goals will look on paper like they're too high, they're too hard. But I always feel that if I am a, an effective teacher, I am pushing my students, I am teaching them. I'm not just giving them an easy way out because they may have a disability. I'm working with that disability and using those accommodations and effectively pushing those. I have high expectations for them. Um, and then another thing is um, the effect of personal biases on expectations that teachers. A lot of times I've heard in this last year especially that a lot of my students who have academic disabilities in terms of SLD or OHI, um, they don't look like they are disabled or that they should be on an IEP. So sometimes these students aren't treated um, the way that they need to be treated. They're expected 
to do things that they can't do because they have an IEP and they have a disability. And so being able to talk to these teachers and talk to others in the school and explain what we know about them helps our students. Thank you.